There are more new modes in Express LRS 3.0 than we had total modes in 2.0. There's six new packet modes combined with four existing modes to give a total of 10. I think I did that right. Uh, with that many modes, everyone's going to be asking, well, what mode should I be using? But I mean, if there was just one mode that we thought was good for everything, then we'd just give you one flipping mode. So see this right here? This is me about to get into the weeds. <clears throat> a channel resolution of 10 bits is great, but isn't just about how many bits there are. Quad pilots might think that the world begins and ends between 1000 and 2000 or 988 and 2012, the normal range of plus minus 100% in the handset. Well, servos go beyond this with E limits or extended limits up to 150%. The CRSF protocol supports E-limits out to 120%. Express LRS version 2 is 10-bit, but we do this by compressing the full CRSF down to fit. Like normal range only occupies about 80% of the 10-bit value, which means that there's less than 10-bit precision, even though 10 bits are being used. To remedy this, almost all modes in Express LRS version 3 just slice out the middle of the full range to decimate down to 10 bits. Slicing, instead of compressing, means that the normal range now occupies the full 10 bits, but drops extended limit support. That increases precision in the normal range by over 20%. Now, when I talk about full 10-bit precision, I mean 10 bits covering the full normal range. The alternative is full range CRSF, which is the full CRSF extended range compressed to 10 bits. I'll start with what we know already. In 3.0, we still have the LoRa modes we're so famous for. LoRa has longer range and works better with RF interference, but has a higher latency. With these modes, the slower the update rate, the longer the range. I'm just going to zip through these, but now in 3.0, all the LoRa modes have four full 10-bit precision main channels instead of the compressed 10-bit we used before. And they also come with seven switch channels and one arm channel. I'm just going to sit here and let you check my math on this image. New in 3.0 are FLRC modes. The only letter you need to understand from that acronym is that F is for fast. So these modes are targeted at racers. The packet goes through the air with lickety speed compared to LoRa, but the trade-off is in range. FLRC just isn't as sensitive and is more subject to RF interference, but I've still seen F500 100 milliwatts go 13 kilometers with over 80 LQ. And unlike the LoRa modes, all the FLRC modes have the exact same range, and all these modes have four full 10-bit precision main channels, seven switch channels, and one arm channel. <clears throat> the modes that begin with F are straight FLRC modes, and there's two of them. F1000, with a one millisecond update rate and a low transmission time, F1000 has the lowest latency of all Express LRS modes. This is designed for racing, or anywhere there's a super low latency link would be a benefit. A warning about this mode, we've seen some weirdness in Betaflight 4.3 where some updates are being dropped, so just be aware that this something might need further refinement to get the best performance from this mode. F500, still FLRC, except with a two millisecond update rate and no issues with Betaflight. It has the second lowest latency of all our modes, and thanks to the low transmission duty cycle, it has the lowest power usage of any of our modes. The next class of modes would start with a D, are still FLRC, but use multiple transmits per cycle to provide redundancy. The D is short for DVDA, or Deja Vu Diversity Aid. The idea with these modes is to use multiple transmits to significantly increase link quality in a noisy environment. It is a night and day difference in LQ at a multi-transmit environment, such as at a race event. The trade-off is in latency though. The, all the DVDA modes have more latency than any mode that sends just one packet because the receiver needs to wait until the last moment to send the update to the flight controller. Waiting produces the least amount of jitter in the output and keeps feed forward from going insane. D500 is a 500 Hertz FLRC mode with two millisecond update rate. It sends each channel's packet twice and that's all there is to it. It has much more latency than F500 though. You're adding latency, but you get fewer missed packets. D250 is the same thing, except for with a four millisecond update rate, and each packet is sent four times. Your LQ will be the highest in this compared to any FLRC mode. Something that's not obvious about the DVDA modes is that the number of updates per second is the same on 100% link quality at D250, or 50% link quality on D500, or 25% link quality on F1000. D250 seems better, right? But in all these scenarios, the flight controller is still just getting 250 updates per second despite the difference in LQ. You need to decide what's more important, the lowest jitter with the highest latency or the lowest latency with the higher jitter from the missed packets. To all the people who said, I don't know why they don't just add more channels. Well, guess what? I added more channels. 
Full resolution mode throws out the switch channels from the normal lower modes and sends twice as many full resolution channels per packet. These channels don't use the full 10-bit precision. They compress the CRSF full range into 10 bits. So each output value represents 1.2 microseconds compared to one microsecond in full 10-bit precision. So there's a loss of precision, but you're getting a wider output range. 885 to 2115 microseconds, which is more suitable for servos, which are what these modes are targeting. All full res modes can support eight channels at the stated rate or 16 channels updated at half the rate. Or you can mix the two for 12 channels that update four at full rate and eight aux channels at half rate. Both the eight and 12 channel modes also include an arming channel. So they're effectively nine and 13 channels, but the arm channel is still only one bit. 16 channel mode has full resolution on all 16 channels. Team 2.4 gets 333 hertz, and both 2.4 and 900 get 100 hertz full res. I've also included a range in this table to compare the range versus the standard lower modes, but theoretically the range is going to be slightly less. The longer packet just has a higher chance of receiving interference, but in practice I haven't really detected any difference. 100 hertz is going to be your go-to mode for flying fixed wing with PWM receivers or flight controllers with INAV. You get plenty of update rate, even with 16 channel mode, and just incredible range. 333 hertz full res is for people who have paid crazy money for fast servos and want to get the most of them like heli pilots or race cars. In addition to more channels, there's also a substantial telemetry bandwidth increase in these modes. Our telemetry payload capacity doubles, which means that higher telemetry ratios are viable. Even with the global telemetry speed enhancements in 3.0, we can see that 333 hertz is substantially faster than 500 hertz at the same ratio, even though its packet rate is lower. All the modes take the same amount of time to come from the handset and to go to the flight controller. So when I'm talking about latency, I'm strictly speaking about the latency of the packet being transmitted through the air. There's always this OTA latency, no matter how synced the handset is to your hand movements. So consider this the absolute minimum. Now let's see how the OTA stacks up. We've got pure FLRC modes out in front, then LoRa 500, then D500, and yeah, you can read the rest. We can combine this with the refresh rate latency to see the maximum mode latency. Now, the values all went up, but note that nobody changed position. F1000 and F500 were tied, but now the F1000 pulls out in front due to its faster update rate. If you add in another 1500 microseconds, you can account for the total time it takes to transfer the data to get the maximum expected latency for the mode. LoRa modes have the longest range, and the slower the packet rate, the longer the range. Straight FLRC F modes have the lowest possible latency, but slightly lower range compared to LoRa. DVDA FLRC D modes have the lowest jitter and the same range as FLRC and have higher latency. Full res modes have more channels, wider output range, and more telemetry. So let's pick some uses and I'll give you my opinion on what modes might be good for them. Racing, you're looking at F500 or D500 with race telemetry mode. Freestyle quads, you want LoRa 500 or LoRa 250. Cruising quads, LoRa 150 will get you a little bit more range. Fixed wing INAV or direct servo output, full res 100 all the way. And helis are ground racing vehicles, full res 333. We've received a copyright claim from Nintendo.